Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Adam Ellis here. If you can hear a little noise, it's just me fan going. Because it is bloody roasting. So I've got me fan going, trying to keep me cool, not working like. Um, so today, I'm going to do a video on my level 1 first aid kit. I'm going to do a separate video off on level 2. Because uh, that's got more advanced stuff in. And that's in more detail, so I'll do another video on that. I'll also do a video on my level 3 first aid kit. Which is like the major trauma one. Um, I've got some other little stuff to go through as well. I'll also be doing every week first aid with Adam. This is the first episode, which is level 1 first aid kit. As you can see right here. Um... Not sure what episode 2 is going to be yet. I'll tell you what, episode 2 will be the level 2 first aid kit. Episode 3 will be the level 3 first aid kit. And then I'll decide as on what I'm doing each week. That will be on Facebook, Instagram, which is AdamElis720. Follow me on there. And also YouTube. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I'll put a link down below. So you can just click on the link, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to press the little notification bell. So every video I do, you'll be the first to be notified. Um, so, roughly try and do, on my YouTube channel, three videos a week. Which is first day with Adam, a reaction video, and something else. And then Facebook and Instagram, every week will be first day with Adam. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So this is my level one first aid kit. Uh, this is what this is what I think. This is my personal opinion of my level one. Not saying that this is what you should be in a level one, but this is what I put in a level one. And I'll go through some stuff why I've put it in there and what it's used for. And first aid kits don't always stay the same. You swap and change all the time. Uh, because depending on what you're doing, depends on what you need. If you're going in the wilderness, then a 4x4 gauze pad might not be for you. You might need a 12x12 gauze roll. Um, definitely need a SAM splint. In case something breaks. So depending on what you're doing. Depends on what you take. But this is just my intake. Of a basic level 1 first aid kit. So let's get it open. As you can see. Oh no you can't. Right there we go. Okay, let me put it this way. And. We've got there in the end. There we go. As you can see, the first two things, this one, this is what I made up, it's a little pack, and I call this my travel pack. Now some of my colleagues at work have uh, got one of these, because I've made them for them. So some of my colleagues will have one of these. Uh, I'll go through what's in it later, but this is what I'll have as a travel pack, so if I eventually go out on my bike, I'd put this in my bag. Um, if we're going for a little hike or a little walk, I'll put this in my bag. I'll take this one instead of taking the full kit. This is like a, a travel boo-boo kit, if you like. And then this one, oh, this one is just a little uh, CPR kit I've made. Instead of putting all the stuff in, in there, I can put it there. I've got more room for something else. This is a little um, CPR kit, so you've got your gloves, some wound wipes. A clinical waste bag and a CPR face shield that's all it is I will try and make more of these um, just before we actually get into the video this is another pack I've made this is my level 2 travel pack uh, there is quite a few so I'm going to start doing some competition time so you've got to stay tuned on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and see how you can bag yourself one of these but that's for another time 
let's get back to this video so right off the bat we've got a green these all come out as well which is why I got this bag because they're all portable as well so if like I have to put the bag somewhere the patient is like over there I don't have to keep taking the bag everywhere I just rip what I need out off I go very versatile so the green one they're not color cut they are color coded for a reason but I've not put that reason in just because I can so this one is all my gauze pads so if we open it up as you can see quite a few gauze pads in there oh so what we'll do pull a few out so skin closures I think these are the bomb I really do like these if you get like a cut that is deeper than you thought put some of these on to close the skin together until you see um, professional help or until professional help arrive you can uh, close the skin up to try and reduce the risk of infection and try and stop dirt, grit, dust and all that getting into it and then infecting it so these are the bomb we're in closures you should have these in every every first aid kit really don't worry anywhere about them uh, next we got some low, adher low adherent dressings 5x5 five five. basically all that is you can't really see through there but it's a bit of um, cotton gauze 5x5 uh, five five centimeters and if you've got like a little wound and that um, clean it with a wound wipe put one of these over put a gauze roll on it to keep it in place or some tape to keep it in place and you're laughing well don't literally laugh because that's not very professional but you get what I mean so yeah there's quite a few of them in there um, iPads not what you're playing obviously these are sterile iPads put over an eye if you've got something wrong with your eye if there's a bit of dust in there uh, say on solution rinse it out and if it's like scratched or whatever put one of these on to stop it irritating and stop them moving their eye as much and making it worse finger dressings self spines really it's a finger dressing you got a, a boo boo on your finger or you got a sore finger or you've uh, got a cut on your finger put a finger dressing on instead of wasting like tape or gauze pads finger dressings they actually work wonders I've used one myself um, in here as well we've got 7x7's seven seven in there exactly the same job as a 5x5 five five, but bigger we've also got 10x10's ten tens, exactly the same job as the others but bigger and some of finger dressing we've also got a gauze sponge which is like a a thicker pad which soaks up a bit more blood than the gauze pads so that is the green one That's the green pouch done, that's my gauze pads. Next up, we've got the black pouch. Again, comes off. This one. Is a single application clean up kit. Biohazard body fluid. These, no matter if it's a level 1 kit, level 2 kit, level 3 kit. Um, a work kit. Paramedic kit. Whatever one, whatever it is, you've got a little travel kit. Doesn't matter. Always have one of these because you never know when you might need to clean up some body fluid. Everything you need is in here. There we go. Contents. See if it focuses. So contents. There we go. If you want to read it, just pause it and you can read what's in it. Um, it's also got 
instructions one okay if you want to read it just give it a pause you've got one two three oh it's a bit blurry anyway four five six steps to follow to do what it does in here it's literally you can't go wrong with it I love it and also triangle bandages non woven doesn't matter if they're woven or not or cotton or whatever they all pretty much do the same job I carry three for one reason if someone has a suspected broken arm I can sling it not literally sling it but put one of these on as a sling keep it upright elevated until they get an x-ray if someone has a head wound great for head bandage disease absolutely great for a head bandage and also if someone is bleeding quite heavily and I ain't got no gauze pads on me one of these because they soak up so much blood great and it can also be good as a pressure bandage to try and stop the bleeding because you can tie it really tight because in this one I don't have a tourniquet it's only a, a basic one so that is a good substitute that's what's in that one so let's get these back in there right that's them two compartments what I'll do I'll flip it round just like so boom and now we get these three compartments so we'll start with the blue as you can see these are just uh, bandages and gauze rolls and crepe bandages let's go through them don't know if you can hear that but sirens are going off it's like bloody Chicago here so uh, first one I pull out is a, a 15 centimeter by 4 meter conforming bandage and what conforming is is it is not a wound bandage it's not for putting over wounds whereas this one a 12 by 12 first aid dressing as you can see it's got like a gauze pad already on it that's for going over wounds this is mainly for support twist your ankle sprain your wrist sprain your ankle sprain your knee your elbow this is just for support and to keep stuff in place like if you put a gauze pad on you can wrap um, if you don't have any wound dressings put gauze sponges or gauze pad on if you've got no tape handy use a conforming bandage to wrap it to keep the uh, thing on place just don't use them on burns trust me it's not good if you use that on burns it's going to stick and then when the doctors or the nurses try and peel it off they're going to be screaming in pain and they're going to hate you for quite a while if you're going to do burns always use clean foam it's great um, again this is the uh, extra large first aid dressing which is this is the one I don't know if you can see it this is the one with the gauze pad on as well I don't know if you can actually see it proper there and that's with um, gauze pad already on it um, crepe bandage again that's just mainly for support sprained ankle, sprained wrist uh, get one of these on give it a bit of support from St John's Ambulance as well now if any any of you want to do like a, a first aid course or anything go on the St John's Ambulance website and sign up for their first aid course they're absolutely amazing you learn quite a lot as well and then you just got some smaller conforming gauze roll and clinical waste bag so when you've you've done your you, you've done your bit you've got bloody gloves you've got 
Dirty wound wipes. Uh, you got plaster packages everywhere. Put it in a clinical waste bag. Dispose of it correctly, and then you side. So that is pretty much the uh, blue bag. Now, as I say, this is just my take on a level one first aid kit. Some of you might not want the um, the gauze pads and that in there or that many gauze rolls or bandages or the um, clean up kit. You might not want that in there. I'm not saying you have to put it in there. I'm just saying this is my take on a level 1 first aid kit. This is what I have in my level 1. And like my level 2 and level 3 kits, it's what I want in it. Not what should be in it. Because no one can really tell you what should be in it. It's completely up to you. There is a, a guidance what should be in it on like um, the St. John's Ambulance website and all over first aid company websites. There's like a little guideline what should what you should um, normally take as a basic. But you don't always have to put it in. Because like I said, first aid kits change all the time. You can substitute something out to put something else in. Because some of you might think, oh I don't have that in my kit. I might put some of that in their kit. Like if anyone else does a video, like I watched um, a guy yesterday doing his level 2 um, first aid kit. He's got some stuff in there that I've now put in my level 1. That he's had in his level 1 as well. And his level 2 and I've put some stuff in my level 2. That I thought, yeah, that could work for me. So it's not, it's your own personal preference what you want in your kit. Because no one can tell you what you should have in your kit. It's not up to them, it's up to you. If you think you need it, put it in. If you don't need it, don't put it in. It's like if you don't know how to use it, or you're not trained in it, then don't really put it in. The only reason some of the, because some of the, in my level 2, there's some stuff in there that I'm not trained on to use. I don't really know how to use it. The only reason I've got it in there is if, like, there's an advanced first responder on scene or there's like a, an off duty paramedic or off duty police officer who don't have a kit on them I've got a kit with me they know how to use that they've got it right there you know what I mean it saves a life doesn't it and then oh wobbly wobbly then we go to our red pack which this is just basically what I wanted in few stuff in there so again shears not cheers shears uh, for cutting gauze rolls gauze pads tape that kind of malarkey uh, just a little syringe for irrigation so again like I say if you've got anything in your eye uh, saline solution in there and then rinse the eye out or if you've got like a, a wound Get some saline solution in there, wash the wound out, you know what I mean? Hand sanitizer. Yeah, at one point you couldn't get it anywhere. Everyone sold out because of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. It was, it's, it was uh, one of them where you couldn't get it anywhere. I managed to get some, so I always have one of these. Not exactly this brand or make but I always have a hand sanitizer in every kit so self explanatory hand sanitizer when you use it now I've heard a few stories that um, one of my colleagues told me today at work actually that was a woman who was using hand sanitizer and didn't dry it proper and went to take something out because it's alcohol it was still wet and there's alcohol on it and she went to take something out of the oven and her hands caught on fire. Now, because it is, I don't know if this one is uh, 